Hello, I'm Pastor Tim Holscher. Thank you for joining me today as I continue looking at things God says are true about us in Christ. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 30, I'm seeing that because of him referring to the Father, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God in three ways, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. And we've been looking at the fact that in Christ we are righteous, in Christ we are sanctified, in Christ we have redemption. But we're looking at the practical application of these. And it'll be beneficial for us to kind of delve into a longer study here on the side uh, over in Romans chapters 5, 6, 7, and 8, where Paul deals with, uh, for lack of a better description, the problem of the sin nature. It's the number one thing that causes believers to lack stability in our Christian life. Not security, but stability in our experience. Romans 6, 1, Paul says, What shall we say then? Or do we continue in the sin? And you can see over here there's a definite article in front of sin. I'm going to bring this out in a little bit, what he's referring to. Continue in these sins so that grace may increase. May it never be. How shall we who died to again, died to the sin, again we have the sin over here, still live in it? Or do you not know that all or as many of us as have been baptized into Christ Jesus? This is not baptism with water. This is baptism into Christ, not baptism into water. And he says that when you were baptized into Christ Jesus, you were baptized into, uh, let's pull it up here, baptized into his death, or the death of him. So when the Holy Spirit took us at the moment we were saved, he put us into Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says that put us in the body, but it also tells us here in Romans chapter 6, it put us into Christ's death when we were put into him. Logical application of that, because these people are asking, well, should we get comfortable with the sin nature so that grace might abound? And we'll explain what that means uh, at another time. But he says in down in verse 11, this is Romans 6, 11, even so consider, and this is where it's logically counted, logically consider this, credit yourselves to be, on the one hand, dead ones, there it is, you can see dead, dead ones to the sin. Notice they don't put a definite article on but the sin referring to the sin nature but on the other hand, living ones to God in Christ Jesus. So this is an in Christ Jesus relationship. So a practical application is, is when your sin nature comes along, the probably the most typical way for Christians to respond to is to go, oh, I shouldn't do that. That's bad. It's a naughty thing. I shouldn't think that way. I shouldn't act that way. I shouldn't get operating like that. But the way Paul says is to say, wait a second, I'm dead to that. That's a grace way of doing it. I died with Christ to that, and I'm alive to God. Why would I want to live in something I died to? That's the question he asks. And then the, the practical implications of this continue through this chapter, but I want to bring us to a verse that ties us in with, um, with 1 Corinthians uh, 1.30. It says in verse 18, And having been freed... From the sin, again, the sin, referring to sin nature, you became slaves of literally the righteousness or something very specific he has in mind. I'm speaking in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves to uncleanness uh, un and unto lawlessness, resulting in further more lawlessness. In other words, before you were saved, you didn't have an option. You did what the sin nature wanted. And you presented yourself to that lawless activity and you just did it. And it just produced more and increased and drove you to do more and more. But now, he says, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness. There it is. Slaves to righteousness unto or perhaps even because of sanctification. Here's our two, right, two words, righteousness and sanctification. Paul's showing you here there's a connection between these two. In fact, I would even assert, though Paul doesn't use the term immediately here, that the, that word redemption also is related to this. Because that redemption is involved in your being freed. If you remember previous studies, I'll try to put a link in uh, down below for these previous studies where we talked about how to handle the sin nature and even this issue of redemption and what's involved. Now, just one thing before we go today, 
to point out this issue, because I refer to this as a sin nature. Here I've pulled up the word sin, but I've asked specifically for uh, my uh, Bible program, uh, Cordance Bible Software is what I use, uh, to find all the places where the word sin occurs with the definite article, which you have right there. And so these are places, and I'm, I brought it down here to Romans chapter, uh, beginning in Romans 4 is actually the first place where sin occurs with the definite article, but all the rest of these are sin with the definite article. Now here it's plural, so it doesn't apply in this. But when it's in the singular, Paul is talking about something very specific. And look at this, all from Romans 5, I, was it 5.12, right? Okay, I just want to double check because this is that 5.12 is kind of the turning point voice verse down here through Romans 8.2. He uses sin with a definite article to refer to what we call the sin nature. That's the way we term it. There may be a better way to describe it, but it's not a bad way. We'll explain maybe the danger of handling it in that way. But in contrast, here's the word sin, and I've highlighted the place places in, in Romans where it occurs without the definite article. Romans 3.9, you can see here it is. Uh, down in Romans 5.13, it occurs like this a couple of times. Romans 5.14, 6.16. In other words, see, you can see it doesn't occur a whole lot. Last one, 8.10. Sin does not occur without the definite article very often because most of this section where he's talking about sin, he's talking about the sin nature and the problem of the sin nature. And I want to begin looking at this because it'll help us understand better this idea of righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption in terms of practical application of who you and I are in Christ Jesus so that we can better appreciate what it means to set our minds with a framework to who we are in Christ as ones that died to the sin nature but are now living unto God in Christ. And when we're doing that, we're going to be able to have a good day in the Lord. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget down below to click like uh, and subscribe. Uh, thank you again very much.